subject line with C bar elements. So here we go, we've made our model. Uh, let's run it and see what happens. And actually, there will be an issue, but I'm just gonna do this on purpose. So we're gonna to run it, we're gonna run it in OptiStruct, so I go under analysis, click the OptiStruct window, we're gonna do an analysis, and then run it. Okay, boom. And we'll see the results. It'll run, but there's a problem with the way it generated the C bar elements. I believe it will run, let's see. Yes, okay, it completed it, there are no errors. It's all good. So let's let's look at the results in Hyperview. So I click on Hyperview. Wait for that to load up. And let's look at the deformations and the stress results. Okay. All right. So something odd seems to be going on in that. It looks like the bottom plate's not doing anything. For some reason, the rivets still do not seem to be connected to the bottom plate, or the C bar elements don't seem to be connected. So something weird happened. So let's go back and check it out. Uh, this will happen probably in other ways when you do your model. I mean, doesn't always work right the first time that's part of this stuff you have to kind of keep trying till you get it to work um, but there are a couple tricks you can do to help see what's going on so okay so I think there's something weird going on with the c-bar elements it's so, okay so now we know why the cards work we understand the c-bar element quite well uh, and let's look at actually one of these so the easiest thing I always find to do is to look at the actual card for the element so if you go under, up here on the top, and again, there's a couple ways to do this, but if you go under Mesh, and then you can see there's a card edit. So that actually shows you the input card that's being used. So let's do it for the elements. So let's do a card element for the elements. And let's pick one of these C-bar elements. And then we do Edit. And now you can see the actual C-bar card for that element comes up. So here's the element ID. It's using property 2, which we can check whether that's right. Here it's connected to these two grid points. It has an orientation vector, so it defined it correctly in the plane. And there's no offsets. But what I do notice here is for the pin, it has all six degrees of freedom released at the first grid point. So at grid point A, on this one, this C bar element does not connect to any of the degrees of freedom. And that's the problem right there. You see, when you pull up on the plate, it needs to at least couple the translational degree of freedom in, I guess that's the Z direction. Okay? So it needs at least three to be removed from here. Okay? But, but we'll remove all those, okay? And we'll show how to do that. Okay, so let's go back. And let's edit our model. All right, so I'm going to go to 1D, and we're going to edit these bar elements. And so instead of creating them, I'm going to actually update them. So let's pick all the elements. You can pick them, you know, by clicking, or probably in your models you'll have a lot of these, so you can do it by collector. Remove all the elements on rivet line collector. So that picked all those. And. You can see here's the pin. Let's set that to zero at A and B. So all that means that all six degrees of freedom will be connected. Okay. If you want to allow it to just be um, like translational, you can s set the rotational degrees of freedom to one of them to be like four, five, six, and that'll free up the rotational degrees of freedom at pin A. You only need to do it for one because that will stop the transmission at the moment. But let's not do any of those, and let's leave it like that so it's actually pinned. All right. So now we've got the elements picked. You actually don't have to worry about the other things because the only thing we're going to change is the pin properties. So then if you do update, it asks you what you want to update. And for us, it's these pin flags. So I click that to pin flags. 
But if you wanted to update any of these other items, that's what you would update, okay? So we update, return. Let's just double check. We'll go under mesh, uh, card edit elements. Pick one of these elements, edit. And yes, you can see that the property card, you know, that, that second line was completely removed because none of the, you know, it released all the pins and there's no offset. So that was a completely, you know, optional card, optional line, excuse me. But the rest of the stuff is still there. We still have the property ID, two grid points, and there is an orientation vector. Okay. So that's the way it goes. So it looks good now. Let's rerun it and see what happens. So if we go to Optistruct, let's run it again. Yes, we'll overwrite the old model. Let it do its thing. Okay, it's done. And let's look at the results in Hyperview now and see what happens. Okay. There's our model. Let's look at the stresses because that's what we usually do. We look at them in the elements. And now in this case, you can see clearly that something is going on. There is some connection because there's stresses now in the lower plate. If you want to look at the deformation pattern, we can set it to about 20%, you know, see what that looks like. And you can see that those have um, coupled up. And you can actually even see the bending because those rotational degrees of freedom were constrained and it is transmitting the bending from the rivet heads, okay? All right, you can also go and interrogate the stresses in the actual C bar elements. So if we go back to the uh, display ribbon here, which allows you to pick what's gonna be shown and we change it to one dimensional element stresses and we can select C rod axial stresses. You can do C rod axial stresses and you can apply those and you can see the stresses and the elements. The axial stresses you can do the other ones that can be reported out. For example, we can do like uh, at the different points C, the stress recovery points, right? And there they are at the different stress recovery points. Okay? So that's how you do that sort of stuff. Let's uh, just for the heck of it, since I got a little bit of time, let's just take those rotational pins off. Let's make it so that the rivets only couple the translational degrees of freedom, and let's see how that affects the results. Okay. All right. So let's go back and modify the model. So we're going to go back under 1D bars. Uh, let's release the rotational degrees of freedom at pin A. Let's pick. Uh, all the bar elements in that collector again. There they all are. And we're going to update. And we're going to update the pin flags. Okay, there we go. And now you can see if we do a card edit, if we check the card element, the card edit mesh, card edit, and select one of these elements. You can see now we have the, the pin flag is set and it's releasing the rotational degrees of freedom. So this will still bend the two plates because the translational degrees of freedom are coupled, but the rotational ones are not. So you'll see it'll a little different result on the stresses. Um, so analysis, OptiStruct, let's rerun it. Let's right over the results, yes. Wait for it to get done. Thankfully, it's pretty quick. And now we can look at the results in Hyperview and see how, how they change, if any. I believe they should change. You should basically see that the uh, The two plates look a little less coupled at the end. I'll explain that in a second. Let's just plot it. Let's look at the stresses and the plates again. Let's look at the plates again. And do the. Let's deform them. Okay. So, what you can see now at the end is you can see the difference, right? So clearly, this top plate is the one where the rotational degrees of freedom were released. And you can see how that's affected the deformation. 
the slope here is um, doesn't bend down like on the lower plate because the rivet heads here resist this plate from bending and this is like there is no rivet head so you can see the difference okay now it's arguable about which one is really a more accurate condition okay but that is the difference okay so that is the difference all right okay that's all I wanted to talk about for those. Uh, actually, with regard to that, you know, from that standpoint, you really probably should be ready to build your models. Uh, the only thing you need to do, left to do, is to define the SPC conditions and the force conditions. You do that by creating new load collector cards. Okay, assigning those, and then of course, creating the load step in analysis. Right, all all that stuff is done in analysis. You define a load step, and then you run it. Okay, but I'll sh I'll do some videos on that as well. Even though I think most of that stuff was discussed in the uh, the the simple videos where you just do the whole the plate. Okay, top and connectors. Here's the actual. Um, wing model. I've taken the skin off just to show some of the interior stuff. But, you know, I generated connectors between the rear spars and the skin in the way we just talked about the two previous videos using a line. Okay? That's the rivet line. Now the question is, what about uh, when we have a curved region like this where we don't have a rivet line, or let's say on this region Okay, where, there, where I can't really draw a straight line. Although I think you, probably, you might be able to draw a line and it'll get the closest ones. But another way to do it is, let's go back, and you can use another option to kind of do this. And most of the times, uh, you know, these things have different options to allow you to, uh, great flexibility in, in defining different ways of doing this. Okay, so again, we're going to still do spot. Here I'm using uh, rod elements, and I've already defined the property card and set all that stuff. But let's let's put the rivet line along here, okay? So instead of using lines, I'm going to use a node list, okay? And you can generate the node list by a path. So you can pick the first node and then the last node. And you can see it generates, it picks all the nodes sort of that connect those. Now, it's not going to put a connector at each one of those points. That's still going to be defined by the spacing. Okay, we need to repick the two components, so it's going to connect the skin to the tip ribs, and all the rest of this stuff stays the same. And then we create, okay, property. Yes, I guess. And you can see here it put down the three connectors just at the spacing, the one and a quarter inch spacing. Okay. So that's a little quick quick way to kind of get around that stuff, okay? Uh, 